minus 50 seconds. T minus 40 seconds. T minus 30 seconds. T minus 20 seconds. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Welcome, 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 everybody. You are in for a special treat today, and I'm excited because I'm about to do something that I've never done before. Today, I'm about to do a $500 masterclass hosted online, absolutely free. You heard me. <laughs> Who does that? As they say, where do they do that at? $500 masterclass on speaking and communication. And I'm super excited just to do this because many of you have been asking me for a minute, PT, when are you going to do a masterclass on public speaking and the art of speaking and communication because you have crafted and cultivated a unique way of presenting information from your sermons to your messages to just everyday data. And I've been contemplating when to do it, where to do it, looking at my calendar and my schedule. And I just said this morning, you know what? Let's do something we've never done before. Let's do it differently. So today we're going to post it. We're going to record it in the next minute or two. I'm going to do it live. And I'm going to ask you to do a couple of things. Again, this is a $500 masterclass. And if you're doubting whether or not this will be $500 worth of material, just get relaxed, get seated, get a pen and a piece of paper and take notes. Now, if you can't do that, just go back and watch it later. Some of you may be at work when you see this. Just know you don't want to miss this. This $500 masterclass, the only thing I'm going to ask you to do is that when we have reached the end of part one, because guess what? There's going to be a part two of this, maybe even a part three, four, and five. That depends on you. I'm going to gauge your response. I'm going to gauge your reaction. I'm going to gauge your appreciation and we'll see if we'll do part two, three, four, and do it in the same format we're going to do it today, posting it absolutely free for everybody to have access to it. Here's the catch. When we reach the end of part one, if anything that I have said helps you become a better speaker, opens your eyes to things that you need to be doing to become a more successful speaker, or as you hear me talk today about being a great communicator, then when it's done, I want you to give a donation based on what you value, what you've received. Now, if you receive a great value and it's more than you can afford, that's okay. You make sure you make a donation of some sort that says, Pastor Troy, I want you to know that I appreciate your time, your wisdom, your knowledge, and your gift of presenting, of presenting these type of classes and courses where people can really have access to data and information, including those that can't afford it. I understand that everybody may not be able to financially pay $500 for a master class, may not be able to pay four, three, two, or $100, may not be able to pay anything depending on your financial situation, but at least you'll have access to the information so that you can advance yourself as a speaker and a communicator. Here's where those of us who can make a difference. We cover you. We cover you in our appreciation. We cover you in our donation because together we can move forward if we move forward together. So I'm ready. I'm so excited. I, I almost got to pace myself because I'm, I know what I'm about to drop is going to be game changing. Now, this is something that I want you to share when it's said and done. I want you to share with your family and your friends because listen, we all have to communicate. Whether or not you stand in front of a bunch of people on a stage, a platform, or whether or not you have to communicate with family and friends and your children or loved ones, we all have to communicate. 
I want to start here and I want to start by addressing leaders specifically, and then I'm going to broaden this thing out to incorporate everybody. I like to start by saying this. I want the attention of all leaders. If you are a leader of any shape, form or fashion, whether it's a religious leader, a business leader, a community leader, if you're a leader, I want your attention because I want you to know this. If you want to be a great leader, you need to learn to be a great speaker. Throughout history, and you can Google this, leaders who have been labeled as great have also been labeled as great communicators. It's a known fact because great communicators can take an idea that exists exclusively in their mind and they can replicate it in others and they can build a mass movement of people who are devoted to manifesting that idea that that communicator had in his mind. Great communicators can linguistically compel others to think a certain way, to act a certain way, and to live a certain way. And you know, like I know, that's a lot of power. Here's the truth, though. We all have the capacity to operate in this power as a great communicator. See, a great communicator can, can earn trust. They can project credibility. And you know, like I know, they can achieve amazing authority through what? A resume and a body of work built by their brilliance, and their balance of their words. I just spoke yesterday, taught a lesson that simply stated, your words have power. Your words matter. And whether you use them for yourself or use them against yourself, words have power. I want you to begin to focus on your ability to become a great communicator. And I want you to do this. Leverage language in a way that is impressive, intentional, and impactful. Let me say that again, because great communicators, they learn how to leverage language in a way that's number one, impressive. Number two, intentional. It's not an accident. And then number three, it's impactful. Their words have an impact on the listeners who are attuned and attentive to what is being said. Now, the mistake that most communicators make, whether you are a leader or just an everyday communicator, here's a mistake that most communicators make. <laughs> that mistake is found in what I call the continuity and the consistency of their communication. For some, when they're in front of an audience, they become a performer for the purpose of performing a task or an assignment or a job. And you've met people like this. They're great on stage. They're great when they have to present they're great when they're standing in front of people holding a microphone, <laughs> but the truth comes out when they're not on stage, when they're not holding a microphone, when they're not presenting to a group of people, these very same people <laughs> struggle with unrehearsed, authentic dialogue. And I've met people like that and it has literally left me stunned, shocked and amazed that someone who has this great ability to present and communicate on a stage and a platform one-on-one -on -one or away from the stage and away from the microphone, the conversation is sad. It's almost <laughs> pathetic. It's almost uh, discouraging <laughs> because you're like, gee whiz, what happened to the person that was on stage holding the microphone versus the person that's standing before me? And this is the error that a lot of communicators make. They perform to become performers and they don't practice to become all around well-rounded communicators. I want to encourage you today to encompass this gift that we have, which is our voice. I want you to take note and recognize that you've been given tremendous amounts of power in your ability to articulate communicate, and simply convey your thoughts, your ideals, your beliefs. But it's not something that comes natural for a lot of people. But just because it doesn't come natural for you doesn't mean you can't master it. Doesn't mean you can't hone that skill. And I'm telling you today that communication makes all the difference in the world. Communication literally causes people to place a value on you simply based on how you sound, how you present yourself, how you show up in different places and spaces. 
I want you to know that a master communicator or a great communicator, when they open their mouth, they spark inspiration without even trying. And you've been around some people like that, that when they open their mouth, you like, you're like this right here. You're like, in other words, you're waiting. You are tuned in. You don't want to be distracted. You don't want to be bothered because you know that when this person opens their mouth, something amazing, good, helpful is going to come out. Well, understand this, that you have that ability inside yourself. Oftentimes we look at great speakers and we sit in awe and we think, man, that person has a gift. That person is just different from everybody else. That person has something that I don't have. Now, they may have something you don't have, but they don't have something that you can't have. <laughs> and today I'm encouraging you. This is just part one. This is a master class on speaking and communication because I want every one of you to understand that you have the ability to become a great communicator. What I love about great communicators is that basically, if you look at them and you strip away everything, they're really visionaries who use words as valuable vehicles to transport listeners. Now, we're talking about listeners who lean toward learning and they can transport those type of listeners beyond the realm of what is into the realm of what can be. Great communicators are the kind of people they don't ask why. No, they actually ask, why not? The way that their mind works and the way that they use wisdom and knowledge and just words is powerful. It's profound. They can move a crowd just like they can move a mountain with the utterance and the organization of the words that just flow fluidly from their mouth. It's a beautiful thing to hear. It's a beautiful thing to watch. But listen, I want you to know it's a beautiful thing to be, and it's something that you can be. You can be a great communicator. And I know some of you doubt that because you may have some issues when it comes to speaking. You may have some confidence issues, which I'll talk about in a few minutes. You may not like the sound of your voice. You may not really be confident in your vocabulary. You may not even like being in front of people. And I understand that because believe it or not, and this really blows a lot of people's minds, that was me. I remember a time in my life where I could not stand in front of people and open my mouth to speak. I would literally lock up. I would literally become so nervous and so afraid and literally scared out of my wits to stand in front of people and say anything. Fortunate for me, though, I grew up in a church environment where I was the son of a pastor and a first lady, and our church always had Christmas programs and Easter programs. Some of you know about this. We always had uh, Mother's Day programs and Father's Day programs. And at my church, when I grew up, kids were highly involved in the program as it related to whatever the season or holiday was. That meant that everybody who was a kid would get a speech. I remember getting an Easter speech and I had no problem remembering my Easter speech. <laughs> I had no problem memorizing my Christmas speech. The problem was standing in front of people, having to repeat what I had remembered, having to present in front of all of these people and everybody's looking at me and I would literally just struggle. I remember talking to people one-on-one -on -one, and I would look at the ground and look at my feet in that conversation because I did not have the kind of confidence that would allow me to hold my head up, and I definitely didn't have the kind of confidence that would allow me to look someone in their eyes while I was having a conversation with them. And I'll never remember, my mother would always tell me when I was talking to her and I would be looking at my feet, telling her something or answering a question, she would say, Troy, hold your head up. Troy, look at me in my eyes. And I would be like, Mom, I just I can't, I can't, it's hard. She said, son, you gotta believe in yourself. My mother said this to me at a time where it seemed like she was absolutely lying and making something up. My mother said to me when I was at that stage, she said, son, one day you're going to speak to millions. One day you will be the person that when you open your mouth, people will stop what they're doing to hear what you have to say because God has given you a gift. And I thought to myself, man, I love my mama, but my mama just lied to me. <laughs> 
I love my mama, but my mama just told me a bold face lie. I can't even talk to my mama, who I love and trust with all my heart. How in the world am I ever going to be able to stand and talk to people? But see, my mother knew that even though I didn't possess it at the time, it was something that I could learn. It was something that was in me to be able to do. And that's what gives me the ability to convey to you that you too can be a great communicator. It literally is right here. People think, well, you know, I don't have this and I don't have that. Or if I look this way, I look that way. Or if my voice sounded like yours, Pastor Troy, I could easily do what you do. And I'm telling people all over the world, it really is right here. There's a scripture in the Bible that I love to share with people, one that we're very familiar with, mind you. And it simply says that as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. As a man or a woman thinks in their heart, so are they. In other words, the way you think determines what you are capable of doing in this world. And if I can get you just to embrace the ideal, the possibility, even the reality, that you can be a great communicator, something will begin to move in your direction. A shift will happen, even though you may not have the skills or the confidence today, you will begin to wrap your mind around this fundamental truth that I can become a great speaker. Somebody who inspires others to perform incredible feats. Somebody who inspires others to believe in themselves just as much as they believe in God. Why? Because you will become the mirror reflection of that very, very truth. Here's what I like about great communicators. And here's why I want you to embrace the fact that you can become one. Great communicators, their words are like magical nuances of sound and imagery and, and power. Have you ever sat and listened to a great communicator? They're amazing, and it literally looks like magic to me. It sounds like magic coming out of their mouth. But the truth is, it's not magic. It's not magic at all. It's actually the attention to speech and the intention to articulate and communicate clearly and concisely. Now, I'm going to give you a few tips. Part one of this master class on speaking and communication. And I want to give you some of my number one tips. I'm giving it to you today. And again, this is absolutely free. Mind you, though, this is a $500 master class that I've decided to post on social media so that those who appreciate it can have access to it and you can give financially what you value it as or what you're able to give because I want to do a test. I want to see the value of appreciation for something like this that most people would have to pay $500 for up front, but you'll be able to give a donation and hear it at your leisure. And again, this is just part one. You say, well, Pastor Troy, I, I'm still not convinced this is a $500 masterclass. Well, just stay tuned because I'm about to give you some meat and some potatoes that's going to really, really prove that you're at the right place at the right time, especially if you're serious about being a great communicator. You're serious about being a great speaker. Here's tip number one. Record yourself talking, record yourself speaking, record yourself. And it doesn't have to be video, audio. Most of you have a smartphone with the capability to record audio. Well, the next time you're speaking, the next time you're talking, the next time you are in a meeting and you are someone who's going to be doing a great deal of the speaking, I want you to record yourself talking and I want you to record yourself speaking. Here's why, reason number two. After you record yourself speaking and talking, I want you to listen to yourself talking and speaking. I cannot tell you the number of hours that I have <laughs> practiced this principle throughout my life, throughout my journey as a teacher, a preacher, someone who speaks on a regular basis, I literally record myself and listen to myself over and over and over and over again. Why do I do that? Here's why. Number three, pay attention to how you sound and what your voice sounds like. One of the reasons why I struggled as a kid when I was having to do all of those speeches at church is because I didn't like the way I sounded. My voice, to me, sounded weak. 
my voice to me sounded unsure. And I remember comparing my voice to the sound of my father's voice, who was a pastor, preacher, teacher, and he just had such a robust voice. He had a voice of authority. When he spoke, people came to attention. When he spoke, people listened intently to what he had to say. And his voice, just the sound of it, sounded like power. <laughs> it sounded like authority. And I would listen to my voice, my little wee, wee, wee voice. And it's like, man, that's that ain't it. That There's no confidence in that voice. I don't even like the sound of my own voice. And you would be surprised how many speakers, teachers, preachers, people who stand before others to present information, you would be surprised how many of these people absolutely do not love the sound of their voice. Well, I want to encourage you that if you will take some time to listen to the sound of your voice, you can run yourself through a checklist. Ask yourself, do you sound confident? Ask yourself, do you sound intelligent? Here's one that's really important. Ask yourself, do you sound interested, interesting, and excited about what you're saying? I listen to some people sometimes, and they themselves don't even sound like they're interested in what they're saying. How do you expect others to be interested in what you're saying if you don't sound interested in what you're saying yourself? Not only do you want to sound interested in what you're saying, but you want to sound interesting. Well, how do you sound interesting? Well, that's easy. You have to sound excited about what you're saying. This is why you guys hear me say all the time, and it's just not a... It's not a phrase. It's not uh, a cliche statement. It's really true. You hear me say all the time, I love my own teaching. And I truly do. I love my own teaching. I love the wisdom and knowledge that comes out of me. I love what God allows me to see and share with others. And I get so excited. If you've ever heard me preach or teach or seen me preach or teach, if nobody's excited while I'm teaching, I'm excited. If nobody's excited while I'm preaching, I'm excited because I've learned a long time ago. You need to get excited about what you're presenting. Why? Because it conveys a certain message to the listener that, hey, he's excited about something or she's excited about something. So maybe I should be excited as well. When you're listening to yourself, ask yourself this question. Do you sound prepared? Do you sound polished? And do you sound proven? And if the answer is no to any of these questions, all is not lost. Take notes and know that this is where you want to focus your attention and you, you want to focus your intention as you begin this journey of becoming a better speaker on the road to becoming a great speaker. Here's tip number four. When you speak, and this is one of my pet peeves, so listen to it because it's going to bless a lot of people because I know a lot of people that speak on a regular basis and they need to hear this and they need to apply it to their speaking lives. When you speak, avoid saying, uh, and avoid saying, you know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? And I hear this a lot, sometimes from seasoned speakers. When you say, uh, a lot, and I'm talking about when you're attempting to convey a point or you're simply trying to think of what you're going to say next, when you say, uh, a lot in the middle of what you're saying in the midst of your presentation and you just keep saying, uh, and then you go on and make a statement, then you say, uh, then you'd render another sentence. Every time you say, uh, you invite a distraction in the midst of your presentation. Every time you say, uh, you encourage people not to listen to you because you don't sound sure and you don't sound certain. And this is something that will be a challenge for a lot of people because uh has become a natural part of their communication and it's a part of their vocabulary. And most people that I know that say uh a lot when they're talking or presenting, they literally have begun to do it almost unconsciously. Many are not even aware, which is why I encourage people to record themselves when they are preaching or teaching or presenting information or data to a group of people. Because when you play it back, you are going to be amazed at how many times you might have said, uh, 
Or you might have said, you know what I mean? Or you might have said, you know what I'm saying? And what happens is interest begins to fade. Number five, giving you some tips to become a great speaker, a great communicator. Here's number five. Please use this one. Learn to use your voice as a vehicle that people can enjoy getting into as opposed to being a vehicle they hate to hear coming. And you know some speakers, whether it's in the business world, whether it's in the religious world, whether it's on social media, there are some speakers that you know, you literally hate to hear their voice. <laughs> and when you hear their voice, you tune out or you scroll on. Why? Because their voice is not a vehicle that you enjoy getting into. Again, this comes with practice. This comes with knowing how you sound. This comes with analyzing your sound, analyzing your presentation, analyzing your speech, analyzing your articulation, analyzing how many times you say, oh, uh, how many times you say, you know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? How many times you interrupt yourself, which causes a disruption in the attention span of your audience. Some of the people who are the most talkative people in the world, people who talk a lot, are often the ones who aren't really saying much. A lot of words does not mean a lot of substance. Oh my God, I gotta, I gotta downshift and pause for a minute because I don't want you to miss that. A lot of words does not mean a lot of substance. Let me go a little deeper. A lot of words does not mean a lot of wisdom. And I'll do it one more time. A lot of words does not mean a lot of success. And sometimes people think, well, if I talk a lot, I'm going to convince people that I'm successful. I'm going to convince people that I know a lot. I'm going to convince people that I have a lot of wisdom. No, 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 no. I want you to understand that you need to learn to say less because you just might end up saying more. <laughs> Yep, I told you, this is a $500 masterclass for speaking and communication. And I'm sure at this point, you've heard something that made you say, I needed that. That can be something that I can apply to my life. Let me say that again. Learn to say less and you might just end up saying more. Here's point number seven. Point number seven. I'll give you a few more and then I'll close out part one. Here's point number seven, though. Tips. To become a great communicator, a great speaker. Here's number seven. Please, please, please find your authentic flow. Find your authentic rhythm and find your authentic vibration when you open your mouth to speak. Here's what I need you to understand. Your words, your voice, here it is, your communication signature should be like your fingerprint. It should be unique. Oh, my God. I got to say that again. Your voice, your words, your communication signature should be like your fingerprint. Unique. You do know you have a communication signature, right? Yeah, every one of us does. Our voice has a unique signature that is our own, which is why you should be very, very careful copying someone else's communication signature. Because you're cheating yourself out of your God-given vocal stamp that if you would learn to work it, learn to understand it, learn to know it, you will be able to use it and leverage it in ways that you will discover will open doors for you because why? Wow, you're operating in your authentic vocal frequency. You're not trying to be like anybody else. You're not trying to sound like anybody else. You are embracing the authentic version of yourself, and that includes your voice. Here's number eight. Number eight. I love number eight. Learn to sound check and pre-screen what you say in your mind before you say it. Let me repeat that again. This is for my communicators. This is not for everybody. This is for my communicators for my speakers who want to become great speakers and great communicators. Listen to me because I'm giving you gems today. Learn to sound check and pre-screen what you say in your mind before you say it. You say, Pastor Troy, is that really possible? I promise you it's possible. 
I practiced it so much over the years that literally seconds, let me, let me, let me clarify nanoseconds before I say what you hear, I have heard it, sound checked it and pre-screened it in my mind before I say it. You say, how is that possible? Practice intention and attention to what you say. See, I'm going to give you a blessing right now. With some practice, this can literally be done in real time before every sentence leaves the runway of your mind. It is checked and pre-screened so that when it comes out of your mouth, it sounds the way that you want it to sound and you say what it is that you want to say. Here's number nine. I got to go. Here's number nine. Number nine. I'll give you some tips to become a great speaker, a great communicator. Here's number nine. Number nine. Please catch this one. This one is good. Solve or resolve any negative body images you harbor about yourself. Did y'all catch number nine? Solve or resolve. And, and it's important that you know the difference because sometimes solving body images take time. But you can resolve it before you solve it. You can resolve it in your mind. You can make peace with it. You can learn to adjust and adapt without the negative internal dialogue that really dominates your internal image, your internal value. You go ahead and resolve that and you say, you know what? I may not be the image that I want to be. I may not look the way that I want to look, but that's not going to stop me from being a great communicator. Solve it or resolve it. And I'm talking about these negative body images that we harbor about ourselves. And again, I can speak on it because that was a part of my problem when I had low self-esteem. Did not like myself. Did not like the way I looked. I used to literally hate looking in a mirror because there was a time in my life and it was, it was all mental, a time in my life. I thought I was the ugliest man, boy on this planet. I looked at myself in the mirror and I would become disgusted because I did not like the way I looked. And it was all here in my head. See, here's what I need you to understand. And this is for my communicators who want to be great communicators, want to be great speakers. If you have internal issues with your external image, it's going to become an unwanted part of your audible presentation, and it's going to seep into your casual conversations. People accept what you project, spoken and unspoken. Woo, let me say it again. People accept what you project, spoken and unspoken. So imagine you being a communicator, a presenter, a teacher, someone that has to deliver a message, someone that has to teach a course, someone that has to give instructions to a group of people, whether small or large, and imagine you have these internal body images, these internal mental messages that are unhealthy and unhelpful jangling around in your head. I'm here to tell you today, if you're going to be a great communicator, if you're going to be a great speaker, at some point in your life, you're going to have to solve or resolve them so that they don't permeate your presentation, so that they don't come out in ways that sometimes you aren't even aware of until you record yourself. Sometimes you need to videotape yourself speaking and go back and watch it over and over and over again, which is something I have spent countless hours doing. I have spent countless hours watching videotapes of me preaching with no audio. Hmm. Why would I watch a videotape of me preaching with no audio? Because just as important as how I sound is how I present. So with the audio off, I am forced to analyze my posture. I'm forced to analyze my energy. I'm forced to analyze my body language. And let me tell you something. When you analyze that and then you add the audio portion of how you sound, how you articulate, how you construct sentences, how you present ideas, and you combine those two 
and you work on them consistently, omg.com. <laughs> your speaking ability, better yet, your speaking confidence will multiply. And you'll be able to stand before people in all of your flaws and all of your imperfections, and you will not be bothered and you will not allow them to seep into your presentation. You will not allow it to disrupt your articulation. Why? Because you understand that it's all here. Point number 10, I'm giving you tips on how to become a great speaker, a great communicator. And this is for business. This is for school. This is for work. This is for the church environment. This is for every person that at some point in your life, you have to stand in front of people and give a dissertation, give instructions, do a presentation. You want to do the work to become a great speaker, because let me tell you something. Great speakers are in high demand right now. Great speakers are in such high demand because the world has been flooded with average speakers. The world has been flooded with below average speakers. Thanks to the advent of social media, thanks to the advent of technology, seems like everybody's got something to say. Seems like everybody's a guru. Seems like everybody's got wisdom and knowledge. Seems like everybody wants to teach you something and that's cool, but you wanna make sure that you separate yourself from the fray by being a great speaker, a great communicator, a great articulator of thoughts and ideas so that when your voice is heard, people enjoy getting into the vehicle that is your voice. Number 10, I got to go. This is a $500 masterclass on speaking and communication, posting it absolutely free, asking anyone and everyone who hears it and can glean something from it that can make them a better communicator, I'm asking you to make a donation that says, I appreciate your time, your wisdom, and your knowledge because you gave me something that I can use. I want to invest in you because I want you to continue to do this. Keep in mind, this is just part one. There is a part two and maybe a three and a four. That depends on you and your level of appreciation. Here's point number 10, tip number 10 to help you become a great speaker, a great communicator. Here we go. Number 10, learn to modulate the sound of your voice whenever you speak. Now, again, I want to downshift because this is one of the most important gifts I can give you when it comes to becoming a great speaker and a great communicator. What's number 10? Learn to modulate the sound of your voice whenever you speak. Think of it this way, just like singers and a singer's voice has a vocal range, you must understand that your speaking voice has a vocal range as well. And I want to encourage you, don't waste this. Use it. A monotone voice becomes minimized the longer it speaks. And you've been in places where you had to listen to a sermon, a teaching, a presentation, a lesson, or some instructions, or a dissertation, and the presenter was monotone. In other words, they started in one <laughs> tone and they had that same tone from start to finish. And the longer they spoke, the less you paid attention. Think of it this way. Your voice is like a manual drive stick shift car. Now imagine, imagine if you will, use your imagination. Imagine driving that car in one gear all the time. Oh my God. Not only that, I want you to imagine what that sounds like. Mm, mm, mm. Now that's going to become very annoying after 5, 10, 15, 20, 30 minutes. Very annoying. Now imagine being a passenger in that car that's being driven in one gear all the time. Imagine what that ride feels like. For those that don't know, it's going to be herky, jerky, Lord have mercy. That's what kind of ride that's going to be. Now imagine you being a speaker, a presenter, giving a presentation, and you're monotone. You're just like that car that's being driven in one gear from start to finish. 
Let me share something with you because I want you to become a great speaker. I want you to have the confidence to become a great communicator. Whenever I'm speaking to one or to thousands, I am intentionally shifting the gears of my voice. Go watch any of my sermons, any of my messages, any of my teachings on our YouTube channel, and you'll see it and you'll hear it just like that. You'll hear it throughout the entire communication, me shifting gears as I'm speaking. And far too many people start speaking in the first gear and they never touch the clutch at all. I need somebody to say, touch the clutch. <laughs> I need somebody else to say, shift your vocal gears, please. In other words, you may start off low and slow. Then you might pick up the pace. But we aren't just talking about speed. We're talking about tone and fluctuation of sound. There are times I will start slow and then I'll get really energetic and then I'll slow it all the way down. And I use little catchphrases that allow me to slow it down. If I'm going really good and I'm really excited and I'm using a lot of energy, when I want to shift gears, I'll go from 99 miles per hour to a phrase that slows me down to 10 miles per hour. And it goes a little something like this. And the Bible says, <laughs> that's after me going 99 miles. Right, just, and it's a sudden shift without any inclination that I'm about to shift. What that does, it keeps the congregation. It keeps the audience. It keeps the class. It keeps the listener or the listeners engaged because you are steadily shifting your vocal gifts your vocal gears. Let me tell you something. Being a great speaker, being a great communicator, doesn't mean that you always say exactly what you want to say the way you say it. Sometimes it means that you are able to fluidly, though, navigate yourself while you're communicating. Just like just a few minutes ago, I talked about shifting the gears and your vocal gears. You got to understand that if a word comes out that's not the word that you wanted it to be, you don't make a big scene about it. You just shift gears and smoothly say what you meant to say, and you'll be surprised how people will flow on with you because you flowed on with yourself. I see people that when they're speaking and teaching, and this is a real life masterclass teaching in real time, demonstrating how to be, how to be a master teacher, how to be a master presenter. I see people sometimes, man, they, they'll make a mistake and, and they tell people they've made a mistake. Oh, I messed up. Oh, I didn't mean to say that. Oh, And they make a big to-do about it, which draws attention to the misstep. Speaking publicly is not always easy. I don't care how long you've been doing it. I don't care how skilled you are. It's not always easy. For me, my challenge is when I present, and listen, it doesn't matter whether you're speaking publicly in person or you're speaking publicly like on a live where everything you say is incorrectable because it's live. For me, what factors into sometimes my accuracy is am I tired? How much have I been speaking prior to the moment that I'm speaking currently? How much do I have going on behind the scenes? things that people don't see, things that people don't have a clue of as a speaker, a communicator, a teacher, you are dealing with these things in real time, even though you look like you are only dealing with what you're presenting. I think about school teachers and how they are teaching students every single day. And they look like they are teaching the students and there is nothing else going on in their world Nothing else going on in their lives other than that moment where you might walk past the class and you see a teacher teaching students. But you know, like I know, that many of those teachers have issues at home. They have issues in their relationships. They have issues with their own children that are somewhere in their peripheral. But they understand the assignment. The assignment is to teach in spite of what I'm dealing with, what I'm going through, and I'm not going to allow the things in my peripheral to keep me from fulfilling my assignment to the best of my ability. So when I talk about being a great communicator, 
and I talk about being a great speaker, I'm not talking about always dotting every I and crossing every T. I speak a lot. And sometimes I'm tired. Sometimes I'm fatigued. Sometimes I've got a lot of things going on in the peripheral. And sometimes what I want to say sometimes doesn't come out the way that I want to say it. That's okay. I just shift gears and I keep on going because I know that I'm a great communicator. I know that I'm a great speaker, that I know how to navigate those issues, those moments, those nuances, so that the totality of what I present is great. And the totality of what I present is not marred by an occasional error, an occasional mispronunciation, an occasional moment of fatigue. I am demonstrating right here, right now in real time, what it means to be a great communicator and a great speaker. And I need to clarify that because sometimes when you hear be a great speaker, be a great communicator, you hear get it all right all the time. You hear perfection. That's not what makes a great speaker a great speaker. As a matter of fact, sometimes your missteps, your mispronunciations, that fatigue that sometimes seeps into your presentation, your speech, your instructions, your dissertation, sometimes that's the thing you need, just a little bit of it, to show your audience that you're human. To show your audience that even though there's a lot going on around you or maybe in you, that you're committed to conveying the message and you're committed to executing the assignment. So I'm I'm literally encouraging you, empowering you. I'm literally trying to show every single one of you that, yes, you can be a great communicator. You can be a great speaker. And you've got to stop thinking that you can't do it because if you believe you can't do it, then you never will. Here's point number 11, tip number 11 on how to be a great speaker, a great communicator. Again, this is for my speakers, my communicators, those that want to be a great speaker, want to be a great teacher, want to be a great communicator. You have the assignment of speaking to people, standing in front of people, presenting information, or you desire to be someone who's able to stand up and present with confidence. I'm giving you tips. This is a $500 masterclass that I am posting on social media absolutely free. Only asking those of you, only those of you who receive something from this that you can use and apply to make you a better communicator, to make you a better speaker. I'm asking you when it's said and done, when I get to the end of part one, because this is only part one, to make a contribution and a donation that says, man, thank you so much. You helped me. And I didn't have to pay $500 up front to come and hear this class. You put it out for everybody to hear. And I just want you to know I appreciate it. Here's point number 11. Tip number 11 as I get ready to close. Part one. This one is very important. Increase and expand your vocabulary. Do what? Increase and expand your vocabulary. Now, I'm not talking about <laughs> using a boatload of words that you can't spell. <laughs> Please don't do that. Please, I'm begging you. Don't use a boatload of words that you can't spell and you don't even know the meaning of. Don't do that. However, I am talking about learning different ways to say different things. Learning different ways to say different things will make you a much more interesting speaker, teacher, communicator to listen to. And how does that happen? Well, that happens by you adding words to your vocabulary. And listen, I'm not trying to get you to be a walking thesaurus. I'm not trying to get you to be a living dictionary. I'm just encouraging you to add one word per day to your vocabulary. I've committed myself, I've disciplined myself literally to learn at least one word a day just for my own personal use. And oftentimes these are words that I may never use, honestly. But I will tell you this, because I continue to expand my vocabulary, even if I never used the words that I have and the words that I continue to collect, it increases 
my speaking confidence, just knowing that in any situation, and I mean any situation, any circumstance, speaking to any audience, that I'm equipped with a library of words that I can draw from when needed or if desired. And then last but not least, my final tip in this part one, Learn to enjoy the sound of your voice. And let me say that again, because somebody will miss that. This is just as important as anything else I have shared. Learn to enjoy the sound of your voice. Here's why. If you don't like the sound of your voice and you don't like how you sound when you speak, work on it. Play with it. Modify it. And find your frequency, find your vocal vibe, find your vocal vibration. And then you practice and practice and practice until it becomes natural. You practice it so much until it becomes unconsciously comfortable within you. I've practiced it hours upon hours upon hours to find my vocal vibration. And I found it. I love the sound of my voice. I love how I can make it go deep. Then I love how I can get high if I want to. <laughs> Just like a singer's voice has vocal range, your voice has a lot of vocal range, has a lot of power. But you got to get comfortable with the way you sound. And if you want to be a great speaker, you want to be a great communicator, I'm here to tell you that you can do it and this is part one of the master class for speaking and communication <laughs> i hope and i pray that you've gotten something out of this that you can apply again this is not for everybody i speak and cover and teach on a plethora of different subjects so this one is just for my communicators this one's just for my speakers those that are and those that want to be. And if you're one of those people and you got anything out of this, then I'm encouraging you, I'm asking you to show your appreciation by making a donation because this is a $500 masterclass that I could have easily set up a time, a date, and a place and people would have purchased tickets to come and be a part of it. Done it before, I'll do it again. But today, I want to do something different. I want to share this information with those of you who understand the importance of being a great communicator. And guess what? This is just part one. Stay tuned for part two because it's coming to you the same way that this one came live and in person and absolutely free for anybody that wants to hear it. Because I believe that those of you that receive something from it, you're going to be able to appreciate it. And you're going to say, hey, man, keep doing what you're doing because you're blessing me over here. And I want to tell you, thank you. Well, until we get to part two, enjoy part one. Listen to it again and again and again. Apply the tips that you heard that spoke to you. And let's journey together to become better communicators, better speakers. Not perfect, but very well practiced. Have a good day, everybody.